big na conference dahil yeah. tayo ay isang napakalaking organisasyon. Meron din po tayong big na conference Cebu and Daba. Aba. Yes. Hi. Ang Kirigma Conference sa Cebu ay gaganapin sa December 1 sa Waterfront Hotel. Kaya huwag kayong mawawala dyan dahil hindi naman mahirap mahanap ang Cebu. <laughs> At sa Davao, gaganapin ito sa December 8 sa Philippine Women's College. December 8. Huwag din kayong mawawala dyan dahil mas malayo ang Davao. Pero puntahan na natin ang Cebu at Davao Kirigma Conference. Nakakasaya. Happening all over the place. Yes, sa kidney ng mga balita. <laughs> Abangan ninyo. Next week, meron tayong i-announce ang ating special guest. Ito ay ang uh, grupong maglilid sa atin ng worship pagdating ng Kerygma Conference. Sa tingin ko, Randy, talagang sabit na sabit na nilang silang malaman kung sino yan. Special yeah. guest natin. Abangan po ninyo. Next week, mga kaibigan, i-review yeah. na po natin ang ating special guest. Yes! Kaya huwag po kakalimutan mga kaibigan Kerigma Conference 2012 Champions Arise sa November 24-25 at the MOA Arena and SMX. Magsasama-sama po tayo dyan. Kasama po ang ating mahiwaga backdrop. Yes! Kumaan nyo naman. Kung uh, maka... Matipuno. Tiyaga. <laughs> Pagpasensya. Masipa. Mukhang builder. <laughs> Pati stream eh. At sa kuko ng mga balita, meron tayong Quote for the Day. Ang ating Quote for the Day ay... Ayos. Ay, exciting. <laughs> Oy, dumadaming tao. <laughs> Warm bodies, Aba. Hi. <laughs> Ayos. <laughs> Ayos. Ang ating uh, quote for the day ay uh, ha quote. <laughs> Yan ang gagawin natin para sa Kirigma Conference. Magha-ha quote tayo ng mga kaibigan, kamag-anak, kapatid, kaaway. At mga kapamilya. Hi. Sige, Kaya dapat magsiksikan talaga tayo sa Mo Arena at sa SMX dahil sa inyong mga hakot. Hi. Hanggang sa susunod na pagbabalita, ako po ang inyong kaibigan, Randy Borromeo. Ako naman si George Gabriel. Nagsasabing pagkahaba-haba din ng prosesyon Sa Kerigma Conference din, pupunta. Ay, tayo na. Hindi oh, ka na. Okay. okay. Punta na tayo. Okay, guys. Okay. Our hakot. Let us go. Hukuhuy. Hakot na. Hakot. Hama ng posisyon. Yeah. Halika na. Hukuhuy. Hukuhuy. La, 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 la. buy something and you know weekends in Green Hills it's one of the it's one of those moments where you don't want to be parking in their parkings in the parking lot because it's overcrowded so many people are there so I went and of course there wasn't any parking and then I prayed I prayed to God Lord begin with a parking space and then all of a sudden I felt in my heart am I being selfish I mean my concern was just this little small thing parking space so many other people are dealing with so with a lot of bigger stuff like world hunger world peace financial debt 
you know, bigger problems. And so I said to myself, Sige, Lord, bahala ka na. And then right after I said that prayer, there it was. The parking space that was just meant for me. The perfect parking space. And then it, it just hit me. I suddenly realized my prayer was a little big for me, but for you guys, it might have been small. In light of whatever you are going through, it may have been a small problem. But you see, the thing is, the way God works, friends, is that there are no prayers too big or too small to a mighty God. Do I hear an amen? That's why even if it's small for you, whatever is big to you is big to God because He cares for you, because He loves you. And that's why we worship Him today because we can count on a God who will fulfill His promises. Now my question to all of you here today, can God count on your worship? Can God rely on your praises today? And if you say yes, then let's sing to our God. Here we go.
can rely on you, Lord, for all our needs, all the provisions, all the resources. Thank you so much. Friends, if you are ready to receive God's word today, I want you to speak this with me. Lord, here's my life. I ask that you change me by the power of your word. I'm here right now, Lord. I'm listening. I confess that you are a great God and that you will change me today. Bless me as I hear your word. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. Hallelujah. One more time. Let's hear it for our God. Woo. Now, if you're ready to hear and receive God's word, put your hands together for our builder and our friend, Brother Bo Sanchez. How many of you are ready for more? I want you to greet someone beside you with a handshake or a big hug and tell that person, get ready for more. And are there people here who have come for the very first time? If you could just raise your hand, we want to welcome you. Welcome, everybody. Welcome. Welcome. God bless you. This is your home. This is your spiritual family. Welcome. Those of you who have come for the first time, please go to the lobby. We'll give you a welcome gift. The graduates of our Lighten Up Couples Weekend, if you could just raise your hand, I want to greet you. Where are you? You're over there, all in green. God bless you. Married couples, we hope that you join us one day in our Lighten Up Couples. It's a fantastic experience for your marriage. Everybody say, God will bless me today. How many of you have ever had this experience where it's, it's a really tight situation, whether it in the area of your finances or in the area of your relationships, you know, it's a tight, you know, it's delicate situation, you know, that at any time something disastrous will happen, you know. C can you see a raise of hands? Have you been in a situation like that? I've got news for you. Whether the situation is tight or difficult, God is still in charge of any kind of situation. Do I hear an amen? I, I believe in that. And maybe some of you, you're in a tight uh, situation right now. I want you to believe that. I want you to hold your, your faith in God. I remember one time, many, many years ago, I was driving my Jeep. That was my first ever car. And we were doing ministry in a not-so-nice area in the sense that, you know, we, we didn't, I mean, it was really lots and lots of people. You know, there was a slum area beside it. I was, I was passing through this narrow road, and then right beside the narrow road on the sidewalk, there's this lugawan, this place where you, you eat rice and, and uh, congee, right? And there was a roof on top. And so on, on a wooden bench, the guys, burly guys with tattoos, they were eating their lugao. You know, I was driving there. And there was a roof on top of the Lugawan, so you know what happened, right? The, the roof, you know, hit my, my Jeep. No, it was my Jeep who hit the roof, and, and I dragged that whole stall with me, and all these guys, their Luga went to their lap, you know, and, and they stood up, you know, and, they, and there was commotion, and you could, you could feel this, the anger of the people around me. And there were so many guys out. You call that a tight situation, right? <laughs> so I, I put on, the, I pressed the brakes, and I said, "Uh oh, you know." And I, this, this happened many, many years ago. But I want to thank God. I had two friends of mine. They were behind me, Joe Dean and Ben. And you know, those two guys—they're my great friends. They they put their hand over my shoulder, you know, and and they said, "We got you covered, Bo. We got you covered. Don't." Don't, don't get out of the car. We'll be the one to go. So they went down in the car. And I want to thank God that Jodine and, and Ben were bigger than all the other guys around. 
And you know, they, they kind of like said, Kayo naman, oh, ang, ang, ang lapit-lapit ng bangketa. Di, di, dito pa nilagay yung lugawan nyo. You know, they, sila pa nagalit, no? I don't know how to tra- translate that in English. But here's my point. God puts His hand over your shoulder now, and God says, whatever situation you're in, I've got you covered. I've got your back. It's okay. I'll, I'll be in charge. I'll be in charge. I want you to put your hand over the shoulder of someone. Tell that person, God's got you covered. Amen? I want you to believe that with all your heart. Amen. And so if you are serious in receiving more from God, let's say our favorite prayer at the feast. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Today I receive all of God's love for me. Today, I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today, I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today, I open myself to God's Word, so I become more like Jesus every day. Today, I proclaim that I'm God's beloved. I'm God's servant. I'm God's powerful champion. And because I am blessed, I am blessing the world in Jesus' name. Amen. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Speak to us, Lord. In Mark chapter 10, verse 29 to 30, it says, Truly I tell you, Jesus replied, no one has left home or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for me and the gospel will fail to receive a hundred times as much. Everybody say, hundred times. Did you get the logic? Did you get the message? God says, if you give up anything for me, whether it be father or mother or brother or sister or house or feet, if you give up anything for me, I will repay you a hundred times more. Isn't that amazing? Have you given up something for God? Have you? Your time? You're here. You're not not at home, right? You're here. Have you given up your time? How many of you are serving God in any way? You're, you're giving up your service, your, your, your time, your talent. Amen? You are giving up, and whatever you give up, God says He's going to reward you. A hundred times. Everybody say that, a hundred times. Now, I want you to ask me this question. When? He will reward you a hundred times more. Firstly, number one, it says here, as much in this present age. Everybody say present. Everybody say today. In this present age, homes, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and fields, along with persecutions. Say that with me. Persecutions. And in the age to come, eternal life. So God will bless you. Everybody ask me again. When? Today, now, in this present age, and in eternity. So this is what God will do. He will give you earthly rewards and He will give you eternal rewards. You like that? You know, I googled earthly rewards to prepare for this message. And one of the things I noticed out of all the, you know, 2.4 million results, sites in Google, most of them in the first, second page spoke about earthly rewards in a negative way. It's like, let's not talk about it. Let's focus on our eternal rewards. And you know, I agree. I agree. Eternal rewards are more important than earthly rewards. But you know what? This Bible passage says, God will give you earthly rewards. If you do the right thing in your life, you know what? You will receive earthly rewards. I want you to hold someone's hand. Encourage that person. Tell that person, God will give you earthly rewards. 
Now, it will be imperfect. It will be incomplete. Of course, because the complete and the perfect reward will be in heaven. Do I hear an amen, everybody? Amen. Everybody say, but even in this world, you will already receive a foretaste, a prologue, an introduction, a first installment. Yes? You will receive a front act of what you will receive in heaven. You will receive earthly rewards today. That's what we're all about in this talk. Next week, we're going to talk about eternal rewards. And I'm excited. I really am excited about next week. But today, I want to focus on the earthly rewards that God will give to you. Brothers and sisters, this is the law of the farm. This is the law of the farm. What you plant, you harvest. What you reap, what you sow, you reap. Yes? And if you do good, even in this world, you will receive blessings. How many of you are married here? Raise your hand. Are you married? If you're married, guess what? You do the right thing. You're faithful to your husband. You're faithful to your wife. You serve that person every day. You know what's going to happen? More likely, great chance, great probability, you will have a happy marriage. What do you call that? Earthly reward. Yes? If you take care of what you eat every day, you eat the right food, you know, and you balance movement and rest, you're, you're able to take care of your body. High probability you'll enjoy strong, vibrant health. Am I saying yes? What am I saying? I'm saying you harvest what you plant. You reap what you sow. The law of the farm. One mango seed, you plant it on good soil, it becomes a tree. According to experts, for the lifespan of the tree, that tree will bear 50,000 fruits. One seed, 50,000 fruits. Imagine if each of those seeds, of those 50,000 fruits, you plant. How many? 2.5 billion mangoes from one seed on its second generation. My point? If you plant, good things, good fruits will come into your life, even in this world. Isn't that exciting? Now here's the key. Don't be attached to your earthly rewards because they're temporary. Focus on what God will give to you in eternity. Put your hand over your chest. Say this with me. Jesus, make your word so powerful today that my life will change. I open my heart I will receive a flood of grace. Overwhelm me with your miracles today in Jesus' name. Amen. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my mouth. Give the Lord a big hand, everybody. Let's be seated. Touch somebody beside you. Tell that person God will speak to you today. I'd like to greet all those in the overflow room in the reception hall. We just want to thank the Lord. It's just right next door. We've got people there, wonderful, wonderful people which I'll visit later on. Today, how many of you know of this very, very popular test called the Marshmallow Test? Raise your hand if you know this popular test. It's not very popular. <laughs> Only three people raised their hand. In 1972, in Stanford University, they got a huge group of kids, 600 of them, ages four, five, and six, and they did the marshmallow test. This is what they did. The researchers, they got one kid, brought him into a room, empty room, devoid of all distraction except a table and a marshmallow. And then the instruction that they gave to the kid was this, kid, if you don't eat that marshmallow for 15 minutes, 
for 15 minutes. You don't eat that marshmallow. We'll come in, we'll give you a second marshmallow. How do you like that? And the kid says, wow. And so, and so this is the thing. Out of those 600 kids, the kids, there was a group of kids, okay? The moment the researcher stepped out of that room, what did the kid do? Grabbed the marshmallow, stuffed it in his mouth. But there were a group of kids who didn't do that. They actually waited for 15 minutes. They actually busied themselves, distracted themselves, closed their... I, I saw the video. Really funny. You know, they, they closed their, their eyes. They, they ran around the room. You know, they, 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 they did all sorts of things. They jumped up and down, you know. They loitered around the room. And then when the 15 minutes came, they got their second marshmallow. But here is what was fascinating about this test. What was fascinating was that they tracked down these kids 20 years later. The kids were already adults, and this is what they found out. Ask me what? The kids who were able to wait, who were able to, say this with me, delay gratification. The kids who were able to delay their gratification turned out to be the most successful, most well-adjusted, most intelligent adults. Wow. I want you to tap someone on the arm and ask that person, do you know how to delay gratification? <laughs> because it is a secret to success. And this is really the law of the farm. The law of the farm is delaying gratification. Am I right? You don't harvest now. No, you plant, you plant, you plant, you plant, and then you harvest. Harvest is gratification. Let's delay it. Let's plant. I'm not going to eat the fruit. I'm going to plant it. Am, am I, are, am, do I have an audience here? Are you listening to me? Yes. So right now, in this audience, there are two groups of people I want to address. It really depends on where you are in this journey of the law of the farm. You may still be in the planting stage. You may still be in the harvest stage face, you know, I don't know where you are right now, so there are two groups of people I want to talk to. How many? There are two groups. The first group are people, and my question to you is this, are you planting? Are you planting? The second group of people is this, I want to ask you, are you harvesting? The first group of people are people who I want to remind that you need to plant. You need to plant. Do, do you lack earthly rewards. If you lack earthly rewards, it means that you lack planting in your life. You have not planted enough. Or you planted, but you planted wrongly. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Everybody say, I'm listening. We envy successful people. I mean, let's face it. A lot of people envy rich people. But we envy their harvest. We envy their harvest. We do not see the planting that went behind the harvest. Oh, you're not, you're not getting this. You're, you're. People envy the car. People envy the clothes. People envy the vacations. People envy, you know, the jewelry. People envy these things. They don't understand. That's all harvest. They do not see, you know, I've, I've, got, I've got business mentors and some of them are here in this room and, and I'm amazed by their wealth. I am awed, blown away by how much wealth God has blessed them with. But you know what? I am awed and amazed even more by the planting that they did for decades. Am I making sense to you? Are you getting this now? Do not envy the harvest of people. Envy their planting in a good way. I mean, there's bad envy and good envy. My, my point is this. The recipe of disaster, the recipe of catastrophe, is when you imitate a rich person's harvest 
without imitating his planting. Am I speaking to somebody here? I have a friend of mine. He loves the fact that I bring out my wife on a romantic date every week. And I told him, well, I've been bringing out my wife for 14 years now, straight, every single week, at least, sometimes twice a week, you know. I just love being with her. And, and so, and so he, my, my friend said, wow, I'll, I'll do that, Bo. I'll, I'll also bring out my wife on a romantic date every week. Yeah, do that, I told him. And he said, Bo, what restaurants do you go to? So I, 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 you know, I love that restaurant, great food. I love that restaurant, wonderful salad, the very best. I love that other, other restaurant. So I told him some names. So he goes and he does it. And I'm happy. And I'm happy. He comes back to me after a few months and said, Bo, our relationship is wonderful. My, my, thank you so much for the advice. I've got a problem. What? My relationship is wonderful, but my finances are terrible. <laughs> Ang mahal pala ng mga restaurant na yun. Buiset. Those restaurants are very, very expensive. And I said, yeah. And then, you know, I asked him where he was financially. I asked him, and I said, you shouldn't have asked me for those restaurants. I want you, I want to be honest, I told him. You know, in the first seven years of our marriage, we, we, I was still dating my, my wife, but I, I wasn't going to those restaurants. We were going to the food court. That was our restaurant. We were going to the fast food joints. And, and there were days, believe me, there were days when I tell my wife, sweetheart, it's time to go. On our date night, you know, our date, sweetheart, it's time to go. We would dress up. We would go to the garage. I'm, I'm serious. We'd sit down. I'd get my bag of peanuts, put it in the middle, and we would laugh and chat, and that's our date. Why? We had no money. But we still had a date. Am I making sense to you? That for the first seven years of our marriage, that, that was what life was? Because we, people don't, har, don't imitate the harvest of rich people if you will not imitate their planting. And, you know, you, you go to a successful person and if you see, like, like I look at my business mentors and I look at how they plant, my gosh. They plant like a lunatic. They plant and they plant and they plant and they, they wake up early. Do, do you know what, what time? You know, I just came from a, I just came, gave a, a super conference for, for, for the highest level in my Truly Rich Club. And, and these, are, these are entrepreneurs that have come from all over the world. And, and I, I just came home that, yeah, yesterday from, from, from Dos Palmas, Palawan, you know. We were, we were there. They came from Australia, and they came from Middle East, and they came from the States, and they came from, from all over. They, they, they just, Indonesia, Singapore, they came. And, and I worked hard. I work hard. I, people don't understand that. You know, they, they just look, oh, Bo, you're so lucky. You know, lucky? Lucky? I don't believe in luck. I, I believe in blessing. But, but you need to be open to that blessing. You need to plant so that you harvest. You want to harvest? Everybody say, I want to harvest. I want to... I have a great family life. Ask me why. Because I work hard for that family. I spend time with my kids. I spend time with my wife. I'll give you an example. During those four days, this week, this week of, of working for, for all the participants and, and giving talks and coordinating, and thanks be to God, I, I had 30 people who are my staff, and, and we, we run. It's no joke running a conference, okay? No joke, difficult, you know? And I slept late at night, you know, giving instructions and talking to the participants and mingling with the crowd. I, let, I slept late at night. What time did I wake up? I woke up early in the morning. Ask me why. So I could hold the hand of my wife and we would walk on the beach together, working on the marriage as I work on my business. Am I making sense to you? Oh, you're, are, you're, are you receiving this? P people tell me, Bo, why are you so successful in your business? God's blessing, God's grace, God's mercy flowing into my life. But I plant like crazy. Like crazy I work hard. 
and I work smart. I have 12 businesses. Wow, 12. Don't be too impressed. I failed in 11. <laughs> but though all, you know, I cried buckets of tears every time a business would fail. Why? You know, but does it stop me? No, I plant again and I plant again and I plant again. I should have had 23 businesses, 11 failures, massive failures, lost millions. But some grew and some became successful. Everybody tell that person, tell that person beside you, plant more. <laughs> tell somebody beside you, don't stop planting. You know what's wrong with us? When we plant, when, when you put a business, for example, and it fails, oh, it failed, it failed, it failed, it failed. And then that's, that, that's it. No, it failed. So plant again and plant again. And do I hear an Amen. Do not stop. Do not give up. If you want a harvest, I'm going to give you a story. One of the attendees of, of our conference last week was a young woman from the States. Let me tell you something shocking. She flew in the day before the conference, and tomorrow she leaves. She just came for the conference. I, I, for four days, I talked about business. I talked about how to grow your business. And ask me how old she was. Ask me, how old? She was 20 years old. Here's the shocking. Here's even more, something more shocking. I asked her. Her name is Nicole. Nicole, uh, who spent for this? You know, flying here. And she said, I did. You did. I did. Didn't ask for her parents. She spent her own money. I said, where did you get the money? She said, oh, when I knew that I was going to your conference, I sold food, you know, pastries to my friends, raising money. I know a little bit about the camera, so I did phot photography gigs in events, you know, asked them to hire me. I, I became, I took a secretarial job in the parish church. I, wow. Wow. What do you call that? Planting. What do you call that? That even before she stepped into the conference to learn about business, even before, with all her little ways of earning money, she was already growing. She was already learning. She was already developing. Am I making sense to you? I told her, Nicole, I predict, I prophesy, you will be very, very successful in your life with your kind of spunk, with your kind of commitment, with your kind of attitude. It's amazing. That's why, that's why, when I receive an email, sometimes I receive an email or somebody comes up to me after a seminar or, or a feast, you know, Brother Bo, I want to attend your seminar. Kaya lang mahal. It's expensive. Brother Bo, very libre. Can you give me a free ticket? You know, my heart is crushed. Not because I don't want to help. I want to help. But with that kind of attitude, that person will never develop. In Tagalog, walang pusta. Pag wala kang pusta, wala kang taya, hindi ka mananalo. Did you get that? Kerygma Conference. I receive emails from people. Brother Bo, pwedeng libre? Ang mahal-mahal naman. I say, my gosh, you have to then work, then earn something. Find a way to get that money. Christians, you've got to stop thinking free. You know, you've got to say, it's religious, so it has to be free. No! <laughs> my gosh! Yes, the feast is free, you know, but Kerygma Conference, pay for it. We, we, we spend, you know how much is the budget to, to hold the Kerygma Conference? Ask me how much. 12 million pesos. That's how much we're going to spend for it. Where will we get that money? Well, through, through tickets and through, you know, but, but that, that's, you know, people don't understand that. This coming Sunday, if you haven't been yet to my How to Be Truly Rich seminar, I want you to go there. This coming Saturday, yes, there's a fee. Work for it. You don't have money? Work for it to be able to go there. 
It's going to develop you. Pumusta ka. Yes. Get, get away from this, you know, you know can, can you make it free for me? No. You are stealing from yourself if you keep on thinking in that way. Make a decision to grow. Make a decision to plant. Amen? Let me now speak. Can I leave that group for a while? And let me now speak to people who need to harvest. Because there are people, the first group of people are people who need to learn how to delay their gratification. They need to work. And, and they need to, you know, really work. I'll, I'll give you one more example. May I? The feast. Why is the ministry so blessed? You know, oh, Brother Bo, I like the, the way you, you plan the courses. And the, you know what? All the feast builders, we gather every week. And you know what we do? We plot all the talks for the whole year. For the next 52 Sundays, we already know what to preach. We, we go into work. We, we really are committed. And then every single week, for five hours, we, we brainstorm, we talk about the message we're going to give the coming week, we swap stories and jokes, and we make the talk very, very rich. Do you see what I'm saying? We work hard for you. We work hard to make the feast the happiest place on earth. We're committed. We plant. And so we're harvesting. We're harvesting. You know what our next series will be? You know, what, you know the title? Ask me what? Vampires. That's our next series. Subhead, how to deal with difficult people. Do you know how many books I'm reading now to prepare for that series? Ask me how many. There are 10 books in front on my desk right now. I'm preparing, I'm preparing, I'm preparing for a series of four talks. Sorry, three talks of about 45 minutes each. I have to read 10 books. What do you call that? Planting, 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 so that I can harvest for you. What am I saying? You know, there's, there's nothing easy in this world. And I thank God there's nothing easy in this world. You, you have to work. You have to work hard. You want a good family? Work hard for it. You want to have a healthy body? Work hard for it. You want to have a great ministry? Work hard for it. Yes? yes. Let me now move. To, I keep on saying, let, let me now move to my second group of people. This, the first group of people are people who, who need to re, be reminded, delay gratification. The second group of people are people who delay and 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 delay their gratification and then they die before they're able to gratify themselves. <laughs> this is the second group of people. My question to you is, are you harvesting? There's a scripture verse, in fact, from, that struck me. It's in Proverbs 10, verse 5. It says, He who gathers crops in the summer is a wise son, but he who sleeps during harvest is a disgraceful son. Do you harvest? You have been planting, but do you harvest? Many people do not harvest. Ask me why. Low self-worth. They, they feel guilty if they harvest. They feel guilty if they enjoy life. They feel guilty. So even if they plant and plant and plant, when there are results already, they do not want to spend for themselves because they feel they do not deserve. And I know that there are some people here who have this. It's, it's a more common problem that you think. Than, than, I, I was like that. I was like that. Can I tell you that story? My wife and I have a wonderful relationship today. But it wasn't like that in the first year of our marriage. We, were, we would fight a lot in the first year of our marriage. And I remember our biggest ever fight our biggest ever fight in our marriage happened in the first year of our marriage. It was a Sunday. It was a Sunday. There was a prayer meeting. While we were dressing up, we were fighting. I want to thank God on that Sunday I was not going to preach. 
and then we rode the car, we were still fighting. When we arrived in the parking lot, we were still fighting. And my wife was in tears. She, she doesn't wear makeup, but she looked like a mess. And she said, I, wanna, I don't want to go down anymore. I don't want to go to the prayer meeting, you know. And so I called the Pio Espanol. I said, Pio, you know, I, uh, anyway, I'm not preaching there. I, I, I was supposed to say hi, hello to the people, but we can't go down. My, my wife and I are fighting. And so Pio said, it's okay, I'll take care of everything. Close the phone. We kept on fighting. Going home, driving home, we kept on fighting. We arrived at home, we went to the bedroom, sat on the bed, kept on fighting. After four or five hours of non-stop fighting, arguing, crying, my wife gave me one sentence that stung my heart. You know what she said? You know why it stung? Because it was true. She said this, Bo, you are so generous to others. You are not generous to me. Ouch. You know what we were fighting about? How we spent our money. We had very little money then, but Oh my gosh, I was generous to others. True. I was generous to the poor. Very true. I was generous, generous. But when it came to my wife, I was not generous to her. And she told me that. You are generous to others. You are not generous to me. Bo, you're not even generous to yourself. True. I never bought anything for me. Didn't want to. Didn't like to. I, I didn't buy clothes. I didn't buy this. I wanted something. No more. I'll just give it away. Th that was me. Why? I felt guilty if I bought something for myself. Why? That's how I was raised up. Don't like yourself too much. Don't enjoy life too much. You might go into sin. So th that was how, that was my religious upbringing. I had low self-worth. I had a distorted religious Belief, and you, you put that together, it's a deadly cocktail. I want to thank God. My wife spoke sense into me. So from that day on, I made a decision. You know what? I've got good news for you. Ask me what. My wife and I, we never fought again for 13 years. We've never had. Never had. We still fight, but it would last for 10 seconds. My wife will say, Aray, I got hurt when you said that. Oh, I'm sorry. Tapos na. Hindi na kami nag-aaway. Boring na eh. 13 years of not fighting. Amazing. It's just amazing. You know, I, I don't. I, and now I'm more generous to myself and to my wife. I, I don't feel guilty anymore. If those little luxuries of bringing her out on her romantic date in a nice restaurant, you know. We, we now give ourselves little luxuries. It's, uh, we go on a vacation. And you know, last year, I, I bought myself a second-hand luxury car, you know. Would have, would have died, you know, in guilt if I bought that a few years ago. But I made a decision, no, um, you know, I'll, I'll buy myself. It's only 600,000 pesos, by the way. My friend bought an 8 million luxury car. No, no, no. Just 600,000 second-hand luxury car. I feel so rich when I ride that car. Um, but, you know, I've, I've made that decision. And I want to encourage you. Tell somebody beside you, enjoy your harvest. If there is a harvest, Enjoy the blessings of God. Give yourself good things. There are earthly rewards. Now, here's, here's my point. My son, my son is 12 years old. Do you know that it was the first time about last week we gave him a cell phone? First time. Do you know that kids now, seven years old, they have cell phones? And if you go to exclusive schools, the cell phone is an iPhone. It's 30, 40, 50,000 pesos, you know. My, my suggestion is that you need to teach kids delayed gratification. 
you, can, you need to teach them to plant. Because when there's hunger, then they can aspire for something. Then they can work for their iPhone. They can work for, for something nice. Are, are you listening to me? You, you let them work. You, you let them find a way to, to, to earn it. But, but for those of you who are, who've planted already in your life, it's okay to enjoy the harvest of God. Yes, be generous. Yes, give 10% of your income to God. Yes, please do that. And put 20% and to invest. But then for the, for the remaining, spend the way you spend it and enjoy life. Enjoy the goodness of God. Celebrate your victories. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just, I just want to pray for you. You know, there was this one man. He, he came to me after a seminar, and he said, Brother Bo, I wish I attended your, your... It was a How to Be Truly Rich seminar, the seminar I'm giving this Saturday. I hope you join us. Um, get your tickets outside in the lobby. But there's this, there's, this, uh, there's this one guy who came up to me, and he said, I wish, that's, I, wish I attended your seminar years ago. You know what he told me? He was in his job for 18 years. Same job. No promotions. And he thought that was his lot in life. That, that was what God wanted him to have. And sometimes we get stuck. We don't want to receive the blessings of God because we think we don't deserve it. No. God wants to bless you abundantly. Put your hand over your chest. Everybody say that. God wants to bless me abundantly. Amen? Amen? Say that again. Abundance. God wants to give to me so that I can share, so that, so that I can enjoy. Parents, I'm going to ask you this question. Do, do you want your kids to be miserable all, your, all their life? Do, do you have any secret desire? I wish my children will be tortured, <laughs> and I wish that they will be so poor that they have nothing to eat. You know, you have, you, I wish there were no parents like that, you know. But you want the best for them? Do you want them to enjoy life? Well, God wants you to enjoy life. God really wants you to enjoy your harvest. And, and my prayer is that you learn. You learn. I'd like to close this with, with uh, <laughs> just two messages. Your earthly rewards will always be incomplete. Ask me why. Because Jesus said, and you wish that he didn't say that line, he says, you will receive a hundred times as much in this present age, homes, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, fields, along with persecutions. Why that line? It would have been perfect if he didn't say that. But he said that because your earthly rewards will always be incomplete. Why? Ask me why. why. To remind you that your perfect rewards are in eternity. To remind you. To remind you. Prosperity will always come with persecution. Abundance will always come with adversity. Ask me again why. Because you cannot please everyone. And friends, don't even try. As you do the right thing and as you keep on doing the right thing, you will be criticized. You will be persecuted. That's okay. You're not meant to please everyone. Make sense? Am I talking to someone here? You know what? There are a lot of people who like me. There are a few people who don't like me. That's okay. There are people who love what I preach but there are some people who don't like what I preach and they, and, they, and they criticize me to the high heavens. That's part of the package. That's part of the package. Please understand. Do the right thing. Follow Jesus no matter what. Do I hear an amen? amen. Can I invite you to stand? I want to pray with you today, but... Let, let me end with one last story. The reason why I love this message, and I really, really do, 
It's because this is the story of my life. This is the story of my life. Age 12, I gave my life to God. 12 years old, saying yes to God. There is this woman who came to me after one feast, and she said, Bo, uh, <laughs> you, you gave your life when you were 12. I, I've always had this question, never had a chance to ask you. Can I ask it to you now? Bo, do, do you feel like you missed out on life? Like, you know, so young, 12, gave your life. You, have you ever smoked a cigarette? I laughed, and I said, never. You ever got drunk? No. Aside from the fact that I'm allergic to alcohol, my breathing pipe constricts, never. You ever, ever attended those parties as teenagers? Never. And then, he, I, you know, I got reminded of a friend of mine. His name is Felipe. When we were in high school, he would always ask me those questions. He would, he'd brag. He'd brag, you know? High school, we were high school, and he'd say, Bo, last night, I attended a wild party. We ended until midnight. I know that for young people today, midnight is corny, right? You go until 4 or 5 in the morning. You know? But during my time, the moment you go midnight, you're committing a crime. You know, we come from martial law where there's curfew, okay? So, so, so my, you know, last night, wild party. We went until midnight, you know? So I told him, well, I, I go to wild parties three times a week. You do? Yeah. We, we end until midnight. I didn't tell him anymore that those wild parties, I didn't tell him this, you know, th those wild parties are prayer meetings, three prayer meetings a week. <laughs> we last until midnight, really, because after we end with our final song, we chit-chat, you know, and then we chit-chat, you know, in the prayer meeting itself, we chit-chat in the door, then we chit-chat going down the stairs, then we chit-chat in the road beside our car, we chit-chat, you know, so, so that's until midnight. And then my, my Felipe said, told me again, you know, Bo, I, I just came from a disco. I go to disco, you know, sorry for young people, you know, you don't know what this word means, but. And, and my, my Felipe said, you know, I went to a disco, you know, once a week I, I, I dance, you know. And I told him, oh, you do? I also dance <laughs> three times a week. Yeah, yeah, Monday, Wednesday, Saturdays, you know, dance, you know. I didn't tell him anymore that I danced to the tune of Ang buhay ng Cristiano ay masayang tunay, masayang tunay. Didn't tell him, didn't tell him. And finally, this is the big thing, you know, great thing. Felipe one day tells me, brags, you know, Bo, last weekend, my friends and I, we went to Tagaytay and we got stoned, like we drank. And then we, we smoked weed, you know, and woo, you know, we, we got high. <laughs> and, I, and I told him, coincidence. <laughs> Last weekend, my friends and I, we went to Tagaytay. Where were you? you know, we went to Tagaytay. We got high. <laughs> and, and Felipe told me, what, what did you take to get high? He was so shocked that I got high, you know. And I said, the Holy Spirit. We gave a Life in the Spirit seminar in Tagaytay. My friends and I. Baptism. Woo! Spoken tongues. Wow, la, 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 la. Got high. We got high. Amazing. Here's the difference. Here's the difference. Felipe, I met him recently. He doesn't drink anymore, gave up smoking already, doesn't take weed anymore, doesn't go to late night parties anymore. You ask me why? He's sick. <laughs> he's got diabetes, he's got high blood pressure, he's got, you know. Me? Ha! I still go to wild parties, I still dance, I still get high. Poor guy! I don't only go to wild parties. I build them the whole world over. It's called a feast. We build them. We build as wild parties. And I'm telling you, 
I gave up a lot of things when I gave my life to God at the age of 12. I left my parents to live in a slum area, did evangelism work there, knock on the doors, share the gospel of Jesus. You know, I, I left my home when I, when I hooked up with a group of celibate brothers and lived there for six, five, six years. I, I left my home and my parents in the comforts of my nice bed, slept on the floor. When we were building Anawim, stayed in, a, in, in the boondocks with the orphans and with the abandoned elder, elderly, lived in that place for three years without electricity or running water. I left a lot of things. I left my, my, my home and my sisters and, and, I, and I left my family. But God's word is true. Today, I have received a hundredfold blessing of fathers and mothers and brothers and sisters and homes and fields. <laughs> Believe you me, I can go to any country in this world except Afghanistan, Pakistan, and <laughs> I can go to any country in this world and there will be friends who will welcome me in their own homes. I've got homes all over the world. I've got families all over the world. I've got friends all over the world. And friends, I'm going to ask you this question. Have you given up your life to God? Have you planted? Have you, have you given up stuff for God? Do not, do not worry. Do not fret. Do not fear. A hundred times, earthly rewards will come into your life. Believe me. Believe me. You give in the love offering, blessings will come in this age and in the age to come. Plant. Invest. Make that decision. Let's pray. Lift up your hands. Be open to His blessings. And say this after me. Father, help me plant. Teach me to plan. Brothers and sisters, if you need more earthly rewards in your job, in your business, in your investments, I want to pray for you. Father God, I pray that you teach your people how to plant. Teach them when to plant. Teach them where to plant. Teach them how often they should plant. Father, I pray that you give them a desire to plant and plant and plant. I pray, Father, for every person here, every person in this room, that you would inspire them to plant more in Jesus' name. To plant in their families, to plant in their homes, to plant in their business, to plant in their jobs. Father God, I pray in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And I pray for those here in this room that have low self-worth, that have distorted thoughts that you do not want them to enjoy. Father, I pray for those that are not harvesting. I pray that you teach them how to harvest and how to enjoy life and how to love themselves. In Jesus' name. Lord, we want to enjoy you today. Today, we want to worship you and love you. We want to be in your presence. We want to enjoy the goodness of God today. We want to taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, come and worship with me. Come and worship God. Celebrate His goodness.
we pray in this moment that you would use this word and plant it in our heart so that it, it may bear fruit one day. Thank you so much, Lord, for teaching us the importance of planting and investing. Lord, even though we, we don't yet see the rewards of our efforts, even though we don't yet see a clear picture of what's supposed to happen when we plant and we plant, Lord, we claim that one day the rewards will just be there because you are a God who fulfills your promises. And as you said, Lord, earlier, you've got our backs. Thank you, Jesus. Teach us how to plant more. Teach us how to invest more. We want to do our part, so strengthen our faith in you also, Lord. We want to put our trust in you, our confidence in you, knowing that you will not forsake us. We've got dreams planted in our hearts, dreams that we know have come from you. And we ask that you bless these dreams, oh God. Bless them so that we may share them to every person that we meet, so that we may share them to other people. And as we put in our confidence and our trust in you, Lord, as we put in what is natural to us, we pray, Lord, that you meet us halfway and you give us what is super in order to meet what is supernatural in our lives. And we don't ever have to live in doubt. We don't ever have to live in fear knowing that you are a God who provides, knowing that you are the God of our dreams. This is our prayer today, Lord. As we glorify and lift your name high, may you be praised by our song today. Because of who you are. Because 
Father in heaven, I pray for every person in this room, in these two rooms that we have together. Father, we pray that your Holy Spirit move in us. In Jesus' name. I want you to take their hand and guide them every step of the way in this journey of planting and harvesting, of sowing and reaping. Guide every person, Lord. Be their shepherd. Be their king. In Jesus' name. If you have your novena to God's love, may I invite you to bring it out. If you don't have it, it's okay. But my encouragement to you is to, you know what I love to do? I love reading my dreams. I love reminding myself of, myself of what I want to happen in my life, of my harvest. Number one, in my dreams is 1,000 feasts all over the world. Number two, I want 300 campus missionaries working in the different campuses here around the country. I, I, you know, I've got seven dreams here. But I like, you know, the six dreams are all about other people <laughs> and about ministry. But number seven is I'll be stepping down as presiding elder of the Light of Jesus family at the age of 55. And I will take a long trip with my I know most of you have your tickets already, so I'm making this announcement not for you, but for your friends and your office mates. After the Kirigma conference, every year it happens. You know, people come up to me and say, Sayang, Sana, I brought my office mates. Sana, I brought my cousin. Sana, I, I say, well, now don't have that regret. Try to bring them at the Kirigma conference. Let them experience the glory of God and the blessing of God at the Kirigma conference. Tell them about it, all right? <clears throat> yes. 
Do you have a ticket already? What? Do you have a ticket already? I think so. I hope so. <laughs> How about you? I have a ticket already. Great. How about you guys? <laughs> yes. As Mo said, there are only four weeks left before Kerygma Conference. That's exactly 41 days to go. Exciting. 41 days to go, brothers and sisters. Before November 24 and 25, Kerygma Conference. One question, Mo. Why are we having a Kerygma Conference? We want to bless the world with God's love. You know, the feasts are growing and blessing many people. But once a year, we want all those people from all those feasts to gather. And we want to bring even those who are not attending the feasts to come and be blessed by God's love. It's going to be a powerful, powerful experience. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, the lobby's there. Go and buy your tickets. And if you can't there or your friends, maybe they can go to, they could go online, online, www.kerygmaconference.com. Buy your tickets now. See you at the Kerygma Conference. Amen. Saturday, I'm going to be giving the seminar, How to Be Truly Rich, and I'd like to invite you there. The tickets are available outside. What's going to happen on Saturdays, I'm going to change your mindset about money. I've always believed that money problems are mind problems. If you fix your mind about how you think about money, you will fix money itself in your life. So invitation come and join me this coming saturday for my how to be truly rich seminar i think that's all are there other announcements yeah next week next sunday larry will be here to sign his book his new book start up your scale up that's uh, no 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 scale up your startup uh, it's available now and then on sunday he'll be here to sign the books he was here in the first session but had to leave but next sunday he said it's going to be for the second session as well Amen. Let's give the Lord a big hand, of course. Thank you so much, Brother Bo Sanchez. Friends, wala ba kayo napapansin? Hallelujah. How many of you were blessed today? Did you feel God's presence today? Yes? Hallelujah. Any first-timers here, once again? If you're beside a first-timer, I want you to greet that person with a warm PICC greeting. Welcome to the feast, to the happiest place here on earth. Now, brothers and sisters, you can take your seats for just a few moments. You heard earlier, uh, Father Alex said that the key to having a successful life is that you should give, you should share, you should impart to other people what you have. Meron ba dito ang mga malulungkot na mayaman? Wala. Puro masasaya dito at mayayaman ang tao. Silipi mo yung love offering envelope mo. Pakisilip mo yung love offering envelope mo. Tingnan mo nga, kailangan mo pa kaya na isa pang love offering envelope at kulang yung binibigay mo. You know, God, friends, whenever we give our best to God, it's not really for us. Just like what Brother Bo said, the Kerygma Conference, it's not for us. It's not only for us, but it's really for everybody else, our friends, our neighbors, our classmates, everybody who needs the Lord. We keep on giving, we keep on blessing others simply because we want them to experience what we are experiencing. We want them to fall in love with the Lord the same way that we have fallen in love with the Lord. Do I hear an amen? amen. Just as Brother Bo said also earlier, in order for you to be able to reap, you have to sow. So what does sowing imply? What is the, the human effort when it comes to sowing, when it comes to tithing? You got to plant. You got to keep planting, giving, putting your trust in God. So if you're ready to do that, I want to encourage all of you. Let's stand up once again. Let's bring out our love offering envelope. And let's be proud of what we have to offer. Because truly, this is something that we can give back to God for all the things that He's given us. And so together we say, Father God, thank you so much for blessing me abundantly. 
I pray that you use this offering and that you multiply it and that you use it to bring more people into your kingdom. Lord, bless me more as I open myself to you so that I can give even more. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. With smiles on your faces, let's come forward and then give your very best to God.